John Lord here and uh, heading towards the end of August. The drought is over. We had a, we had a drought for a few weeks. Um, a few, we, we had a little bit of damage to stilbies and a few plants like that. But more, we, we had to water a few things. Not a lot. We, we didn't water very many things. A few of the hydrangeas that were under trees and the trees were sucking the water out. We just watered them just to keep just to keep them in a holding pattern. And now everything is back to normal again. And in relation to the general countryside, the drought has had no effect on the hedgerows or anything like that. Everything is still perfect. The great thing about Ireland is we never get more than two or three weeks, four weeks for drought and obviously it's raining again. So everything is back to normal, back to our lovely rainy weather. And I never thought I'd like the rain in Ireland, but actually, but when you, it's funny to you never, it's like you often wonder emigrants when they leave Ireland, but why do you so, why do you want to come back? But when you're away for long enough, you realise the good bits that you've forgotten about, you come back to see. But anyway, um, we're going to, this is a sedum called Mojave Jewels, and I bought some in, and they look really terrible, the ones I bought in, they got some disease, a little fungus, so we're going to plant them out. And uh, it's the biggest plant, it's one of the bigger plants that we have in our little alpine bed. We try to keep the plant small. And my alpine bed is it's like, it's like a miniature. Everything is, has to be miniature. This is our miniature fuchsia. Um, we have, oh, we have this. This is good if you can come across it. It's a euphorbia, Mercentes or something. This is south face and it comes down and up. Really, really good. If you can get it. And this is prostrate rosemary. It's a little bit in the big side, but the great thing about prospect prostrate rosemary, if you can get it to come over a wall, flowers come back up again. Really, really good. But it's as I say, it's a little bit big for there. Probably want to do a bit of pruning. Now we can sell that to the chef in the in the kitchen. Very same. Now it's called uh, Rosmarinus officinalis. Anything with officinalis uh, means it has a utility. And uh, Simon and Garfunkel have a song. But I, I only recently I looked it up. I thought they wrote it, but it seemed it's five hundred years old. It's are going to Scarborough Fair, Parsley Sage, Rosemary, and Thyme. And the reason we use botanical names is because we can be exact. But they're very clunky because you couldn't say, Are you going to Scarborough Fair? Patricillinum crispum, uh, Rosemarinus, Salvia officinalis, Rosemarinus officinalis, and Thymus vulgaris. Remember me, who one lived there, she was once full of mine. So that's why it's very important to have the botanical names to lock something down. But for day to day use, go with the ordinary names. Hello, buy me an acre of land. Here we have the sunniest part of the garden and lots of that persicaria has grown, put little bits down and it's grown bigger and bigger and bigger and it is nice but it's such a sunny part that you that it's it's there's very few parts like this so you really want to give some plants that really need the sun. For instance we put some Russian sage in here last week, took some of this persicaria out and put some just a bit of silver and we are going, we were going to put these here. Curry plants, which you eject from the garden center. Problem is, the silver and silver, so that's the go. That's the go over here. And these are the Mojave Jules. See the Mojave Jules Ruby, they got, a bit of leaf blotch. Now it's not a problem, I don't know how that happened, but it's not a problem in the ground, so they're not really saleable. But if we plant them, they'll be good next year. Now, very tempted to plant forward in here. We have a, a crocosmia that has a tiny touch of pink in it called Limpopo. Just a slight bit different. So we either plant these four, or we plant the silvery ones. I 
I am inclined to think that the silver is better. Okay, we have the Sea Holly here, which is also silver. It's very different. And they look, as I say, bedraggled. They'd be good. They will, they, I think we'll plant them there. That's a job to do. And what are we going to do with these? Over here. Three, four, or one, two. These are, they're not sell, selling either because they've gone a bit sort of, they're very folly over. They got a bit clunky. I kind of. I think I kind of think these are really good. So sorry about that. Put them on a half price table, which we actually don't have. Uh, we put them there. We'll do it now. You see the turtles? See the turtles in the, in the pond? Yeah. We had, uh, we can pot that up. It's a, uh, it's a osteo, osteospermum. some of this it's it's very um invasive oh my watch very invasive but very controllable because it only goes a little bit down so it's like it nearly like a carpet it's one of the dangerous ones are the ones that go really far down and come up they're the ones you have to watch like japanese anemones the japanese can an enemy can be your enemy Never make an enemy of Japanese enemies. Another dodgy one will be Euphorbia uh, Robbie. Very dodgy. It won't control it, it will control you. You plant a lot of Euphorbia Robbie. What, what will happen? Oh, we've another little job to do as well. We're going to cut back a bit of cat mint. Now, by right, cat mint should really cut it back in this is the end of August, the beginning of August, and you often get a second flush. And it's much tighter for the winter. It looks better. And one here. See how dry it is, even after all the rain. Oh, well, I'm not a great fan of staking, but a little, because it's so top heavy, a little sneaky stake tied in and hidden might be no harm. One, it's actually a very strong plant, very resilient plant, Autumn Joy. Look, if 
working on the snail, we will have mercy. And that was my joke, one of my dad jokes. Uh, snails um, weren't affected by the pandemic because they always work from home. I'm only allowed to tell one dad joke per day. Now, what would be great would be a third one in there. One more, if we have one, but I don't think we have, but a third one in there would be lovely. Sun is black, flare head, and the butterflies lie on top of it. That's that bit done. There we go for the reveal. That's because I'm a bit, what's it, oh, something, oh, the oh, attention, one of the ones. Good water and that will be the way. Now, the funny thing about it is, plants like that that are succulents, they don't need a lot of water, but paradoxically, when they're establishing, they need lots of water. Same carry on here, so I won't do it all. Put the good ones to the front, I think. And I'll, um, a curry plant, Helichrysum. There's a few different types of it. It's a Helichrysum, member of the daisy family, which is Helichrysum metallicum, that one's called. Um, but funny, if they're in a pot, they never get the silveriness that they get when they're in the ground. It's like really, really silver. And it's, I'll just show you something else. Which I would all we automatically look at a plant. You see the way it's gone like that? It's because it's been inside. It's been not, um, not particularly happy in this pot. I always look low down. You see that? Those little growths. That means it breaks some old wood which means you can cut it hard back and it will regrow, but you can't do it lavender. If you cut lavender into really hard wood, it won't regrow, but these will. I will always find out that first that about a plant. Well, actually, it's gonna to take too long. So we won't bother. No, we'll do it. See, if I do one, and then I have to, how am I going to dig everything else out without damaging that? So the whole lot's to come out. Funnily enough, it's a very easy plant to grow, but you notice the persicaria, it's not doing well there. It's just too much water being sucked out. If you look at it there, how well it's doing, and compare it with there. And I would have my doubts about the crocosmia there because it might, it might be too dry for it, we'll see. And you know, air philosophy is, only water, only water where in very, very dry spots, very particularly, and when, when they're establishing. If a plant needs to be watered all the time, it shouldn't be there. Shouldn't be there.
Grant has to pay his own mortgage. See how easy it is to clear the ground. One, two, two, three. All of, the, all of these could be cut back and potted. Or if you were planting them somewhere else, you would do this. Cut them back, plant them immediately, water well, and they will establish in about 10 days. Very easy. Don't forget there's a watch buried in there somewhere. <laughs> Now, if you were a real OECD, whatever the personality was, you would get all this away, get all this away. But it won't really matter. Next year, we cut this hard back and it'll come and push up lovely. Maybe like that. Always place the good side to the front. Okay. This must have been an old driveway here or some type of path. But funny, that's what these plants in nature, that's what they would have been grown in. And the soil is like really, really hard. But this Plant one. Stop. Oh, sorry. I'll plant the rest later on. And we, we, and we have noticed here, we have a garden center. If I put plants out, say six plants to plant, I'll come back there later, be five or four left, because the other two have been brought up and sold. So <laughs> that's happened. And then you, you have a gap. But anyway, so we'd have to plant these fairly neat, fairly soon. Now, last job. Finished. Cut them in. Somebody never brought the hose back, which, um, which would annoy me normally, but it's going to come in very handy. Lovely. Jordan East and Becky Goldstorm. I was going to cut this back, but Someone has already cut it back. I don't know who about a month ago, Yana probably, and it's coming back lovely and it's actually going to reflower. But if I was cut, some bits here weren't cut back. What I do is I do that and I go like this. But 
But you see, the problem now is, you know, I'll get the worst. You flick so they don't fall into the plant. So if you have a lot of cat mints, you flick really quickly. You see, can't do that. Right there for Christmas. Look here, David. Look, it's new, new flowers coming on, so we have to be very careful. So, I wasn't really able to show what we do. Because I left it, it should have been done, should have been done in early, in early August or late July. But you can see how it works. Great. So that's going, that'll get us right into October. Um, we need to remove, we need to tighten up the Cotinus Grace. It, it, it's a hybrid and it has hybrid vigor. It shows these amazingly long shoots out. Um, they break, it's not in the wind. So we need, we need to, just to nip them back a bit. I'm not doing it today, just doing one. Snip. Oh yes, yeah. and I'm gonna finish off the campus grass. That's a perfect combination. Contrast in every way. Look at look at that contrast, colour and form and everything. That's perfect. Oh Laxton. Oh here's a better example. Look. And that was done about a month ago as well, free flowering. Color yet. The pampas has just started. I'm sunning down silver, and I think it's going to be the business there. Absolute business there. Well, that's to do us.